Popular in Nogan for Yellow Card, backstage the television show, Jack, Jacob's Cross, to mention about a few. I have the man, none other than Lira Gopal, right here on Living Legends. And we're coming to you at a time COVID 19, the deadly virus, he has claimed a thousand lives. And we certainly hope by bringing him to your screens will make you smile in the midst of this pandemic. Proudly brought to you by Proton Baker's Crunchy Cookies, found on 250 grams, 500 grams, 1 kg. As as well as 2kg and their message to is that stay safe little a day to the gov government's health uh, precautions and let's all stop spreading the virus by staying at home in our houses this is a living legend i have none other than lira Gova. lira what's up hi there how are you thank you so much for having me i'm okay good to see you yes yeah, sure uh, Makura, I'm dad. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> it's been very long. All right, we don't want to wait, um, waste much time. Uh, just a brief background about yourself. Uh, well, born and raised in, in Zim. Um, um, we were schooled there. Um, I think I um, was more into athletics than I was into acting. Mm -hmm. When I was in high school, I think a lot of people don't know that, but... I think acting got the better of me as I got older, um, up until I shot Yellow Card, then I left mm -hmm. Zim, went on a bit of a world tour, and moved to South Africa 19 years ago, and graduated with honors in acting and directing, and I think from there, did my first job in 2005, and here I am now, married with three kids. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. All right, uh, Lira, so you stayed uh, in one of the best local uh, movies, if not the best uh, movies, uh, Yellow Card. What can you say you took uh, from that uh, movie and uh, any experience you, you, you said you used uh, on your career on what? Well, um, you know, I think uh, Yellow Card really was, uh, mm -hmm. I think, more than a stepping stone. You know, I think it was a, sort of like the beginning of my career on an international platform, but also had to take me on a journey of how much I didn't know still. Mm -hmm. So I think like a lot of people used to think after Yellow Card, kind of like disappeared, but I just took time to actually go study and better myself than what I know, which I think is very critical whenever we want to grow the industry, it's for us to actually become learned about it and, and understand mm -hmm. it better. Mm -hmm. All right, nice. Uh, in 2006, you featured uh, on an SABC uh, 3 uh, series, uh, One Way, and you had the role in Gamer. Tell me the experience of uh, featuring in, in a foreign land. Yeah, it was, um, I, think, I think it was a good show. It was a good experience. Um, uh, I think maybe a little bit ahead of its time, but <laughs> it was a good experience. Mm -hmm. All right, so how did you break into the SA market and how was the experience for you? I don't know, Nedze. I think uh, it helped the fact that I was, I was studying here. Um, um, you know, so I think straight out of college, uh, oh. literally two months after I graduated, I started my first job, you know. Um, so it helped um, having had studied and I think Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is what it takes to get into these kind of shows. And also having spent uh, four years in a country, you learn to speak Zulu, you learn to speak Tswana, you learn how everything works, you know, and, and, and you ride with that until you mm -hmm. find your lane and you run hard in it. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right, so since Yellow Card is regarded as one of the best productions we have in Zimbabwe, and, you know, currently uh, most of the productions have not been meeting up the standards of the Yellow Card, uh, of the Nerias, ETC. Uh, any plans of coming back home to try and improve the industry and helping local producers as well? Um, absolutely. Um, you know, um, I think one thing we also need to be lenient on in, in Zim image industry is that we got to remember that Yellow Card is 20 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, there's new ways to do things now. There's new ways to tell stories. Um, you know, um, and so instead of maybe trying to better something that was done 20 years ago, start a new trend, you know, tell other kinds of stories. You know, I mean, Yellow Card was predominantly an AIDS film, but now we could tell a story of how 
a job appraiser became a job appraiser or how a, uh, you know, um, different kind of artists became who they are. Or even look back at a person like Mugadota, mm -hmm. you know, make a movie on a person like Mugadota and start celebrating people who are, you know, uh, the classical legends, you know, mm -hmm. you know, make, mm -hmm. make documentaries about them, tell how, what they went through, you know. So I think mm -hmm. we need to bridge all those different uh, parts of entertainment from, you know, the Mukadotas to us, the yellow cards, to mm -hmm. now this generation, so they can set their own trend. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I'm always keen to work with people. I mean, it was lovely doing the Namas, uh, working with the team that did the Namas, you know, it was, yeah, it was so creative, the fact good. that they all came together <laughs> and were able to, to set a new standard, you know, without mm -hmm. having to have to compare it to anything. We just took a different route and, and it birthed something wonderful. So always ready and prepared to work with people. All right, nice. So, all right. So, who inspires you in general? Um, you know, I, <laughs> I think my inspiration really comes from uh, different people and different experiences that I've gone through in life. You know, um, when I was young, I was very inspired by my mom because she was a single mom who raised kids, raised us well. As I got older, I got inspired by other actors with my kids. Mm -hmm. You know, all right. And, so, um, was you? Was Okay, so was Yellow Card your first production? Uh, no, I'd actually done a lot of films before that. Um, I did a couple of short films. Uh, I, get, I did a couple of stage productions, actually, uh, before Yellow Card, so I, and a lot of commercials. Um, uh, my first acting job was when I was 13, um, and it was a very successful play at the Seven Arts Theatre called The Singer, mm -hmm. which was fantastic. And I think that was the one thing that planted the acting seed in my life, to say, this, I want to do this for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. All right, nice. So we're going to take a short break, but we will be back in a very few minutes. Yes, I have Lyric Gopal, popularly known for Yellow Card, one of the best productions we have in Zimbabwe. This is Living Legends, proudly brought to you by Proton Baker's Crunchy Cookies. Do not go away because we're right back after this short break. <music> of living legends and thank you so much for tuning in in this hard time you're having uh, may we all stay safe and may we all adhere to the government's health uh, precautions stay at home so that we reduce the spread of this deadly virus i wish you well and may god protect us oh yes i have uh lira gopal proudly uh, brought to you by proton baker's crunchy cookies this is the second segment lira are you here with me Nice. So I understand that um, in 2013, you scooped the best actor in comedy. Imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. How was the experience uh, for you uh, to have foreigners recognize your efforts? Uh, it's actually really, uh, you know, I was really very, very honored and I was very happy about that award. Um, like I was saying, you know, in my life, I've had different people that really inspired me. And to do that character uh, was a really a miracle character. I remember initially when I auditioned for that role, uh, for that show, um, I'd been denied the role because they said, you know, I didn't really look the part. Um, but, you know, because I've got a praying wife who prayed for that role for me, the very, I think literally two days later, they called me back for that role. And uh, it was my first time doing comedy and to win an award also for comedy. My first comedy was really inspiring. And I think, you know, um, um, I really owe a lot to, to my partner. Oh, that's, that's really nice. Eh? All right, so I understand that you have been in this game on, on, on both ends, <laughs> that is Zimbabwe and South Africa. Do you think there is a difference and what can be done to up our game as well? I think, um, the thing is that, like, I think we are, um, uh, maybe I think we shy away from the fact that we've actually got amazing Zimbabwean stories to tell. We're currently working on one now. Um, 
and we're hoping that you know everything will materialize and one day we'll be talking about the film um and i think to realize that we can actually tell our proudly zimbabwean stories mm. i think we'll uplift the zimbabwean film market and entertainment i love what music is doing now you know musicians are doing that uh, they're tapping into like a good zim culture and spreading their wings combining with other african cultures and putting Zimbabwe on the map. I mean, I, we can definitely do that in Zimbabwe without fail, but we've just got to believe that we can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and realize that the resources that we have may not be as as difficult as we think it is, actually, if we can put our heads together. Mm-hmm. All right, so as a celebrated person, both in Zimbabwe and in South Africa, what are you doing to give back to the society? Um, so we do a lot of training uh, where we offer people um, performance training, for acting and voice uh, voice coaching. Um, I think uh, we, we train quite a number of people, people who have actually even turned professionals, uh, you know, who are now like big celebs that have just passed through our hands from training them, you know, and we don't charge anybody for training. So that is really amazing uh, that we do that, you know, um, that's part of our giving back um, initiative um, as a company and as an individual. Mm-hmm. Nice. All right, I understand that you were born, uh, your very own uh, uh, Zimbabwean legend who is making it in South Africa. Tell me about the family acceptance and the community acceptance as well that you're venturing into film. I was born and raised in Harare. Um, and uh, I, I think a lot of the time, um, you know, people are not actually so proud to be where they're from. Uh, but and one thing about me is I think even when I do films, even if there isn't a reason to, I'll drop a Shona line, uh, a Shona line, just <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah. Not the Can't sweat. I, I, I got a feeling after this one, I might not be allowed back home. <laughs> All right. Uh, how, how's your family doing there? Are they supportive? Is, is they a little, little venturing into film? <laughs> I've got a really amazing family, uh, married to a very beautiful wife called Keleto. She's South African. Uh, we've been together for 17 years. Uh, we've literally, you know, watched each other grow. We've got three beautiful kids, uh, Kiki, Mimi, and Didi. Um, and our youngest daughter, I think, of the three, our youngest one is the one who's sort of like leaning towards what daddy's into in terms of performance. She shot an advert about two years ago, did an advert together. Mm-hmm. And I was directing, producing as well, which was really, really, was a debut character. So it was really, really exciting that we managed to do that as a family together. Mm-hmm. Nice. I know you have uh, shared uh, the stage with um, the legends like uh, Gringo as well as John, John Banda. Actually, if John Banda was uh, still here with us, he could have been on this show, Living Legends. How was, uh, how was it like to work with uh, John Banda? And what kind of a character was he like? He was amazing. He was amazing. He was amazing. Um, Colin was was very creative. He was one of those guys who, whenever he was on set and we had to shoot a scene together, you always had to be on top of your game because you never know if he's going to go left or he's going to go right. So you always had to be lit whenever you were on, um, on set with him, you know, because he was very creative, very quick. And his, his comedic timing was phenomenal. And he was so... He was so so well trained that he was was good at holding a straight face. Sometimes you wouldn't know if he's are you serious or you're not, and you gotta go with the flow and you gotta feed back the actor, you know. So it was really phenomenal. Even with Gringo, I think that infamous, infamous line of "It's a black boy met him." A lot of people don't know that that line was actually not written into into the script. He just came up with that on the spot, and to have to try and keep a straight face after that line was absolutely exciting. And, and that's what acting and performance is about, you know. Mm-hmm. And who do you miss the most in Yellow Cat? I think I actually miss working with Colin a lot. Um, I, I miss my two co co actresses as well, uh, Ratizo Mambo and Kazamba Mkumba. I think we also had a lot of fun because it was our first feature film together as well. Uh, um, so I think you know, and, and I miss my director John Reba. We share a birthday. Um, so I, I think a lot of people. It's too many to mention. <laughs> Some are not. All right. Even 
Nice, we're gonna take a short break, but we'll be right back very soon. Yes, I have Leroy Gopal, our all time actor who is now currently based in South Africa. This is Living Legends, proudly brought to you by Proton Bakers Crunchy Cookies. Do not go away because we're right back. <laughs> segment of living legends and thank you so much for tuning in i hope you enjoying yourselves as much as i'm doing and i trust and hope that you are all staying safe and staying indoors as we're trying to limit the spread of this deadly virus that has come our way we hope that god protect us and our families in every way yes i have lira gopal right here on living legends proudly brought to you by proton bakers crunchy cookies yes he is one of the pioneers of film industry he is a legend and he is now best in the diaspora leroy uh, I know you're featured in uh, Backstage, the television show, and Jacob's Cross. Tell me about the experience. Uh, backstage was actually my very first job in South Africa, which is absolutely amazing. Um, I had the producer, Dion Opperman, who came to watch my fourth year play. Um, and my fourth year play was uh, really quite a, an amazing piece. Um, um, and uh, he came and he watched it, and... As soon as he finished watching, he said, listen, as soon as you graduate, don't go anywhere else. Come straight to studio for a wardrobe fitting and uh, you'll start your job. Um, and for sure, uh, the following year, the second week of January, I started shooting backstage, which was amazing. It put me on the map in South Africa. Uh, it made a nice big noise for me. Uh, Jacob's Cross is also really phenomenal. Um, um, I got to work with people who I was in college with, who had pursued their dreams also, who are cinematographers, directors, Ate. Uh, Ate was my junior, and he was directing Jacob's Cross, which was really amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, so both of those jobs really, I think, um, really, uh, I think are quite special to me. Jacob's Cross also very special to me because it was a time where my career took a dip in South Africa between uh, 2009 and 2010, 11 actually, and I couldn't get a job. No one had to give me a job. And they came across Jacob's Cross, and that's how I came back again into the industry mm -hmm. you know, after like, a mm -hmm. three-year dip. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So tell me about um, a foreigner's acceptance in a foreign land. How are other citizens uh, accepted in a foreign land, especially in this kind of industry? You know, uh, to be honest, there's no country that's perfect. There's no places where it's perfect. We all have our challenges as as people and as countries. It wasn't tough, to be honest, for settling down in South Africa. It was tough. Um, but, you know, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. True. So I realized that if, uh, you know, if I lived in South Africa, I had to learn to, how to speak Zulu and Spana. That eased off quite a lot of being able to settle here and communicate with people because... Uh, <laughs> but, okay. but you realize that they were right. You know, if, if you live somewhere, it's nice if you can speak Zulu or... or or Twana or one of the 11 languages just really uh, makes for better settling in. So I think, uh, you know, it, it's what you make it living in a foreign country. You have to you know, you know, buckle up and get get going with the punches when the punches get rolling. Mm -hmm. All right, nice. I, I can see that you are actually indoors, right? In the wake of uh, COVID-19. Yes, in the wake of our uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, how are you coping uh, together with your family? Has it affected you in any way uh, together with your work? Well, yeah, it definitely has taken uh, quite a bit of toll on our work. Uh, but we are, uh, my wife and I are blessed that uh, our business is set up at home anyway. So uh, we are able to operate our work still at home. We've got a studio here at home. My wife's also got her studio here. So it really helps that we can do everything we need to do anyway from home. I think the tough part more than anything has been homeschooling our kids. Um, and it's, it's really, it really tests your patience, but I've really enjoyed it. Made me appreciate teachers <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> so we are coping all right. And I think, you know, encouraging other people to stay home as well, because that's what we've been doing. We've been on lockdown. I think our lockdown is ahead of you guys, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, it's 
really it's actually being effective i think we've uh, you know dropped from an effective uh, an affection rate of 22 percent mm-hmm. and from staying at home we brought that down to seven percent which is really good mm-hmm. All right. Uh, in, in light of our global uh, pandemic, just like any other sector, our local arts industry has been affected and there will be consequences to incur by uh, all parties in the sector. What advice can you give to best approach uh, this uh, situation? You know, if we can really, I think government, most most governments have got funds mm-hmm. for, uh, for a crisis like this when it comes to entertainers. We've seen it happening here in South Africa mm-hmm. where they did set up a, a little coffer. I mean, it's not a lot, but you know, where, where you can apply and you can get assistance, uh, you know, for the next month. Uh, if, if you know, if you can encourage governments all around the world to, to do that for entertainers, uh, because especially in Africa, because I think we don't take, you know, this entertainment business as seriously as they do maybe overseas, uh, like in your in your Bollywoods or your Hollywoods, you know. Um, so if it's possible and if it's there, some sort of support for our artists because, um, you know, entertainers are not going anywhere. Uh, we are going to be here to stay, and we're going to be here for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so we really need to take care of it. We are really an important part of the economy, an important part of of people's lifestyles. So, let's invest in it, and let's take care of our entertainment. All right. So, uh, right now in Zimbabwe, uh, we are on a second one uh, day uh, lockdown. And what advice do you have for those citizens who are resisting to to be at home and who are resisting uh, to comply with the government orders to stay at home? Yeah, but in the Gumba, you must go home. They have to go. People have to stay home. They have to abide by it. Um, and this is where I think it's the one time where we love our army in saying, yeah, mm-hmm. let's get those people who don't want to get home. They have to go home. <laughs> but in the hands of the Anzi. The guns are going to anti menis association, Yaga Kumbira Guti, the number Kumbiro, twenty minutes, the Gumbo, Bob and Madzima. All right, thank you so much uh, for having us on Living Legends. Now, this is Easter, and today it's actually Easter Monday. Uh, what have you done uh, for Easter with your family? I think it's very important for us to recognize what Easter actually means to us. Um, I think Zim, as a predominantly a Christian uh, nation, myself as a born again Christian, you know, I think it's when we really uh, take time to actually acknowledge what Christ did for us on the cross and to really give thanks to our Heavenly Father and say, thank you, Lord, uh, for what you've done. And to spend time with with your loved ones in quarantine like you've been doing, you know. Um, we've done that, you know. We've had our communion together as a family. We've prayed together as a family. Um, and I think it's important for other families, you know, if you, if, if you believe in Jesus Christ, uh, to do so and if you don't you can inbox me on my social media i will preach to you and introduce <laughs> you for this wonderful name i speak of and i think uh, if you believe then you know take time to acknowledge and give thanks to christ for for the cross nice Nice. All right. So again, in Zimbabwe, we are celebrating 40 years of independence. Kubanika uh, Yasunungurwa, as as a pioneer of a local film, what do you have to say? I think um, it's time for us to, to you know, to create our own legacies now, as mm-hmm. this generation, as the current generation, as the people that are there on our Zimbabwe. But I need the, what we've learned in the diaspora. Uh, what people are learning back home and, you know, combine and, and create our own legacies now and re, rewrite the history books. Mm-hmm. We've been what we've been through, we've seen what we've seen, but now we can actually start our own legacy and say, right, not 2020 when Zim turned 40 as independent, as an independent mm-hmm. country, Takatanga Kodai so we started doing this. I think it would be really fantastic if people can really actually look to that uh, and start working together. Mm-hmm. All right, so for someone to be called a legend, do you have anyone that you want to pay tribute to tonight? First and foremost, I want to thank God for the talent that he's blessed me with. Because if it were not for him blessing me with this talent, I wouldn't be here as a legend. Um, you know, I want to thank my family, my mom, my aunt Rash, my sister, uh, you know, my cousins, who, uh, my uncles and my aunts, who, uh, when it was Christmas, I just did say, you little, you little, I guess my findings. You know, those are the stages that we were born on. Little do we know that that's what, you know, would become today as, as, as big entertainers. You know, and I thank people like that. I want to thank my wife and my kids uh, who encourage me every single day to say, you know, we, we love you for what you do. We love you for who you are. Um, and and to my fans, 
you know, to the people who are not just Tiani, yellow card, it's a black boy med, and to everybody who sees me on the street and they say that, you know, I want to say really thank you so much. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's really inspiring that everybody has spent so much time, you know, following my work over these years. That's what I think really made, you know, would make one a legend. And, and thank you for people like yourself who take time, you know, to say, Leroy, we'd love to do an interview with you to celebrate your life and your achievements. Uh, thank you so much you know, to people like you and your production team. You uh, it, it's more, <laughs> uh, it's what we should be doing more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, right now we, we have uh, so many Leroy's who are looking at us. What do you have to say to them so that they can be where you are uh, since someday? You know, uh, the sky is not the limit. Uh, uh, in whatever talent that God has blessed you in, furthermore that talent, grow that talent, hone in on that talent, you know, expand on it, go study about it, go learn more about it. Even me, I'm still studying now, I'm still learning, I'm still reading books on performance. <clears throat> you know, so I encourage young actors, young Leroy's who are wanting to be like me or even surpass what I've done. Uh, you know, do past Hollywood, start your own production company, write your own scripts. Don't wait for anybody to create the work for you. Create it yourself, um, you know, and make your own dreams come true and realize that everything that you need to make your dreams come true is locked up inside of you. God bless you with all the keys that you need. You don't need to wait on anybody. You know, take your baton and run your race now and stay in your lane and run it strong. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I really mm. appreciate it. All right, maybe just a, a word of hope to the Zimbabweans in general about this phase uh, we are in. I think to, to, to my brothers and sisters, uh, we just want to encourage everyone to say, you know, in this time that we're going through these uncertain times, please mm -hmm. stay home with your family. Mm -hmm. Look after your families, you know, uh, find new things that you can do for the next uh, uh, 21 days. You know, they say it takes 21 days to build or break a habit. Mm -hmm. Start something that's, that's exciting, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, you know, maybe it's time to spend time together. <laughs> you know, so let's Thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight. Yeah, thank you. 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 Thank <laughs> All right, yes, that was Leroy Gopal right here on Living Legends, proudly brought to you by Proton Baker's Crunchy Cookies. I must love you guys and leave you, but do not despair because next week I'm back again, same time, same place with a different legend. So in this um, midst of pandemic we're in right now, let's all stay safe, let's all stay at home, and let's prevent uh, the spread of this deadly virus. God to protect us and to keep us and our families families and it was Easter indeed hope you had a lovely time it's independence again 40 years of freedom may God bless you see till meet again next week same time same place and the technical crew that was running around to make sure the show is on point goodbye